Hi, I'm Megan Daly, Assemblywoman for California's First Assembly District. During my time in office, we've worked with community leaders to identify local problems that require solutions at the state level. The work we do at the Capitol directly impacts the constituents in our district and all over California. And here's how. My name is Dr. Sean Dugan, and I'm the Director of Forensic Services for the Shasta Community Forensic Care Team. What I do is I'm an adult and pediatric forensic medical examiner. That means I conduct all types of forensic medical exams for patients of all ages, from cradle until grave. I work for Shasta Community Health Center, and my office is out of the Children's Legacy Center, which is the first child advocacy center here in Shasta County. My name is Kimberly Johnson, and I am the CEO of the Children's Legacy Center, as well as One Safe Place here in Shasta County. We have services ranging from Child Advocacy Center to forensic medical exams with collaboration with Shasta Community Health Center, as well as residential programs. And then with One Safe Place, we have a domestic violence shelter, court advocacy, and a lot of other services for victims who have experienced any type of violent crime. So prior to AB 925 being passed, law enforcement would pay for the forensic medical exams for all children and adults who were sexually assaulted in California. The trouble with that model was it was really hard for those rates to keep up with inflation and to keep up with the increasing cost of running a medical exam. So medical exam teams were sometimes working on rates that hadn't been changed in two decades. And so some of these teams were facing funding and staff shortage issues. And in fact, we actually did have teams close across the state of California. And when a team that conducts these exams closes, it decreases access for patients in that area to those exams. And what happens is patients have to travel farther. So a patient may have to travel three, four, five, six hours to get a sexual assault exam. And in those cases, during that three, four, or five hours, the patient may decide um, that it's too much trouble or that this is too traumatizing for them, or frankly, they don't have time to go get the exam. Without AB 925, we were headed down a slippery slope where teams were facing an uphill battle of how do we keep the lights on, how do we fund our staff um, you know, for doing these exams without increasing the amount of money that we're getting. Uh, so AB 925 identified this problem and it actually fixed this problem. So now there is stability across the entire sexual assault network in that forensic medical exam teams can bill the appropriate amount they, that they need to bill to keep their exam teams running. Because there are not the standard funding methods, meaning standard insurances, standard Medi-Cal as an example, being able to fund those exams, examiners like Dr. Dugan and physicians that we see all across the state are having to come up with creative strategies to try to offset the cost, the growing cost of running these exams. So here locally in Shasta County, uh, we had to double the cost of the reimbursement rate for the exams to even barely scratch the surface. But then the cascading effect is it put this undue burden on law enforcement. And so every single one of our local law enforcement agencies here in Shasta County was maxing out their sexual assault exam budgets. And so they would get halfway through the year and they wouldn't have any more budgets to being able to pay for these exams. So they were either having to go to city council and advocate for more money in that route, go to the board of supervisors, or they were having to eat out of their general dollars in order to fund those exams, putting them in this really difficult position because they will always provide a victim an exam when, they are, when a victim needs an exam. And the other catch 22 is California law prohibits charging for the sexual assault exam, which I think is a great idea. The patient should not be charged but we also can't charge the insurance. We can't charge Medicaid. So you're left with this exam that takes approximately four hours of a doctor or nurse's or advanced practitioner's time, yet no way to bill for it. AB 925 helped provide that stability to pay for those examiners to be on call and to pay for their time to come in or pay their employer. One of the other big misconceptions that most people in the public have is that when you go to an ER um, for after a sexual assault, that you will be uh, receiving care from someone who's trained. And what the general public needs to know is that most doctors, uh, advanced practitioners and nurses are not trained in this. And by most, I mean an overwhelming majority are not. Uh, evidence collection is not part of routine medical school, uh, you know, advanced practice school or nursing school. 
What this bill has done is it has really taken the burden off of our local jurisdictions in terms of their need to try to advocate for more dollars to therefore pay for these exams. And it's given more financial stability because of the way that the funding is now coming from the state. So it's, it's a really, really big deal. And Dr. Dugan and the forensic care team have served close to 800, mm -hmm. right? Close to 800 uh, victims of violent crime in the North State since their inception in 2015. And the Children's Legacy Center, we have served about 500 children in our community since our inception in 2019. And about 80% of those that we serve have experienced some sort of sexual violence. So the prevalence is absolutely there. And I think, you know, just to land the plane a little would be as we look to provide a whole family continuum of care for those that have been impacted by violence and by sexual assault, the gap that we're seeing right now, the largest gap that we are seeing uh, is in forensic medical care and is in specifically pediatric forensic medical care. And in five to 10 years from now, I'd like to see, you know, mandates that medical schools, nursing schools, and advanced practitioner schools mm -hmm. have dedicated courses to domestic violence, to sexual assault, to human trafficking, to child abuse. Not just a one-off lecture, not just a one-time, you know, kind of thing, but an actual rotation where they go through and learn forensic medicine. And that's what this is all about, yeah. is just medical treatment and medical care. That's right. Thanks for watching. If you have an idea that needs a legislative solution, contact my office at the link below. It's an honor to serve you.